I'm probably going to make more videos like this soon. This video is very much essentially a soapbox. I, I don't think personally a bad one, but very much still a soapbox. I am not the only one who who is part of this community by a long shot. I'm not the only person in this community online by a long shot. And there are so many people that I watch and support on YouTube that not only on a technical level do this much better than I do, but I personally feel do a lot better than I do. And I could go on and on about them, and I probably will at a later date. But I stand by the title of this video. Being an animation fan always has been, and I think now just as much, I think now is even more relevant than ever, is a war. And being an animation fan is an intense burden. Because you have to know how much you are willing to stand up for what your limitations are and what you are most passionate about. Twenty twenty two, in my opinion, not only had some of the best animated movies of the past of the past. Not only had some of the best movies of the 21st century so far, but also had some of the most disappointing and to a point downright pathetic performances of the, of the past, of the 20th, 21st century. By which I mean the past roughly 22-ish years. I did not watch every movie that came out in 2022. I did not watch every animated movie that came out in 2022, for sure. But there were some very significant moments, both positive and negative, from multiple studios that happened in this mm -hmm. year, in this past year, that really stuck out to me. And I think I'll start with the negative one so I get it out of the way. I have gone, the best word I have is Vendetta. I have been on a Vendetta and more just bad, gro bad grounds with the Walt Disney Corporation for over half a decade at this point. On multiple levels, I think they do very unhealthy things, very weak things. Things I personally do not like as a consumer, things I do not like as an animation fan, things I do not like as a person. And I think that their intense monopoly over popular media and entertainment is genuinely terrifying sometimes. In winter of 2022, Disney released an animated movie called Strange World. This is their fourth movie to delve into the idea of an animated world that tries to sometimes combine fantasy or sci-fi elements to a slightly more mature audience and experiment with new ideas that they don't normally work with, to a point. It is also the fourth one to not perform well in doing this, but in my opinion, it is the second one to attempt this and do it poorly. Not just perform poorly, but do it very poorly. Strange World is probably the worst advertised 
Disney movie of all time. The absolute worst marketed, worst advertised movie of all time. Many people were surprised when they started to learn that this movie even existed when it came out. That they didn't get see a trailer in theaters for movies they went to. And that there wasn't a trailer for this movie for Disney's big, giant winter release, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. There are a lot of theories around this. And one that I think holds a lot of merit is that this movie was released still under Bob Chapek's rule before Iger has now currently returned to CEO. And it released near the end of Chapek's ownership, not ownership, leadership, or lack thereof. But here is the bigger issue with Strange World, and it's extremely poor performance. The issue. There are four movies in the Walt Disney headcanon of animation that they have done that has ever truly been scary in terms of low performance. The Black Cauldron, Atlantis, The Lost Empire, Treasure Planet, and The Good Dinosaur. Of those movies, three are under Disney's roof, one was under Pixar's roof, two of them are hailed as underrated classics that deserve so much more credit and attention than they got. One has a mixed audience of support and underwent what is still to this date the worst performance and the longest development time of, of a Disney movie ever, this, of an animated Disney movie ever, and one barely ever gets talked about. Treasure Planet Atlantis did extremely poorly at the box office. End of story. Atlantis got a direct-to-video sequel that was very basically three short stories that was supposed to make a TV series that never happened, and Treasure Planet was never heard from again. The Black Cauldron opening weekend lost to the Care Bears movie that had already been out for two weeks. It is still recognized in the Disney, Disney history as the saddest day in Disney history. When the most famous animation studio of all time lost to an already, already playing greeting card movie. But Good Dinosaur, Good Dinosaur is like a nightmare that will never escape Disney, Pixar. Good Dinosaur is the reason that Incredibles 2 was released, was rushed and released early so that they could push back Toy Story 4 when Incredibles 2 needed more time to work on it. Good Dinosaur is the reason that Frozen 2's team were pushed beyond limits that they deserved. Because after Good Dinosaur, Disney has unofficially made a choice to never delay a film again. Because they delayed that movie and their return was abysmal. So if you're like me and you don't like Frozen 2, or if you just don't like it in general, or if you think it could have been better, I think it could have, but even if it couldn't have, the animators and the writers and the directors did not deserve the treatment they got. And that treatment was because of Good Dinosaur first.
But now we come to 2022. Where Disney has really, really pissed me off for most of the year. I don't like turning red. I want to make another, I want to make a video about it in the future. But I don't like turning red. I hate, hate, hate the live action Chippendale Disney Plus movie. And I could go on. I probably will get to that one in a future day. I swear I will probably get to it. Because it genuinely was the worst movie I saw in 2022. And it legitimately pissed me off. Lightyear? Not as much as Chippendale, but really annoyed me. Really annoyed me. I had hope for Lightyear when it was announced. And I was so thoroughly unimpressed with the choices it made. And its complete lack of interest in not only respecting the Toy Story franchise that it was born from, but in giving something original, personal, or entertaining. If you haven't seen Lightyear, just watch the Buzz Lightyear cartoon. And don't you say to me, oh, but that's a cartoon for kids. This is a big, mature, grown-up movie that's supposed to be delving into the past past, of, and Buzz's origin. Because that cartoon show not only actually tackled interesting themes and felt like the kind of story that a Buzz Lightyear toy came from, but it actually respected the franchise it came from. Lightyear, the movie, tried to claim it was Andy's favorite movie growing up. I don't see a single moment in any Toy Story property before Lightyear that suggests that Andy would have grown up enjoying this movie. It is not Lightyear. It is not Buzz Lightyear. It is flat. Then we come to Strange World. This marks the fourth time, like I said, that Disney has experimented with the idea of taking human beings and putting them in more sci-fi, more unique situations and worlds outside of Earth and focused more on the humans in sci-fi elements over fantasy elements. And it has blown up in their faces, but unlike Treasure Planet and unlike Atlantis, which I think are excellent movies in their own right, flawed, but excellent movies in their own right, Strange World and Lightyear lack imagination and passion that will, that will allow them to have a dedicated following in the future or become a cult classic. Especially because of the delay of Across the Spider-Verse, which was supposed to come out this year in October, I'm pretty sure Sony is just buckling down on working on what they're currently working on and preparing to release their giant, giant animated movie that they've been working on for years after the extreme success of its of its predecessor next year. So I won't comment too much on it. But I gotta say this, and I probably should wait until another time to say this, but I gotta still say this because of how passionate I am and how much I love the first movie, but I'm really nervous about Across the Spider-Verse. I'm really concerned that I won't enjoy, and I'm really, really concerned that it won't fit based on how well the first movie worked. Okay, let me try to be more clear about that. (sighs) 
into the Spider-Verse managed five different spider people in a cohesive narrative and gave enough focus on everyone and introduced everyone from the ground up and still kept the focus on Miles where it needed to be. Across the Spider-Verse is already toying with the idea of dozens upon dozens of spider pe of spider variants. And I'm just really super concerned that the movie is going to buckle under its own weight and really and I think it's going to do a great job trying to balance all of it. I just don't think I'm gonna personally enjoy it because of how well the first one worked and I think the animation is going to be phenomenal. I've heard great things about the spot and his design and how he's going to evolve throughout the film that I'm super excited for. I think all the voice acting is going to be phenomenal. I think seeing some of these spider people is going to genuinely be really special and really cool and I'm going to really appreciate the cameos and references. And I think the animation is really going to be just groundbreaking even beyond the first movie. And I think everyone's going to do a great job and I think it's going to be a very good movie still. The first one is just my favorite movie of all time, and I'm so on the fence about this one becoming too overwhelming for me because I'm someone who really doesn't like spider Geddon, the comic book, and I'm really scared that this is going to be like spider Geddon. That's how I feel. I'm really sorry. I hope it didn't come across like I think this movie is going to be bad. I don't think it's going to be bad. I'm just really nervous because I don't need Across the Spider-Verse to be just as good, to be as good or even better than Into the Spider-Verse. I just need it to be a good successor that I enjoy. But I think it's going to stop at being a good successor. And I'm really scared because I want to enjoy the movie, but I'm really scared I won't. Please, please understand me on that. I legit don't remember if Sony released any animated movie this year. I'm, I really don't remember... Maybe, maybe Hotel Transylvania 4 in the very beginning of the year, but I'm not sure how that worked out. I'll gloss over Illumination quickly, because I've complained about this a lot, and I need to make another video before the Mario movie officially comes out, especially since my thoughts on parts of it have changed. Not softened, have changed. And I have specific opinions, and I have ways that I think I will personally enjoy this movie a lot more than just if I enjoyed it regularly. I will personally find it entertaining. But I'll put simply at, I didn't want to see Minions 2. I don't. I really don't like the first Minions movie. If it was good, great. If you enjoyed it, more power to you. you I made sure not to see it because I didn't want to support Elimination. That's it for me where they're concerned. For most of the year, Paramount gave me my favorite movie of the year and one of my favorite movies of all time. And still to this day, Paramount made a movie that gave to me the best experience I've ever had watching a movie in a theater in my entire life thus far. That movie was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, a film I absolutely love. Thanks to a little success by the last studio of today I'll talk about. I can't quite say it's my favorite movie of 2022. Just barely can't quite. Still my favorite experience watching for the first time. And even then by a pretty slim margin. But not my number one of 2022. I'll talk about two studios today. I almost forgot. The streaming service and studio known as Netflix is a two steps forward, one step back company, especially in animation. Every time Netflix is giving us a Sonic Prime or Del Toro's Pinocchio or even a good live action thing like Wednesday, which I still haven't finished, but I was very impressed so far by since it would have been so easy to mess it up. Every time they do something like that, that pushes them forward and really makes me happy that Netflix is pushing animation, then Inside Job gets canceled. Then they toss Pinocchio out of theaters too quickly and lose money they could have earned in the process because they want to dump it on Netflix. And, 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 ugh. 
Netflix is constantly shooting itself in the foot, especially with this animation, and we desperately need to push to get it to stop. Didn't finish Sonic Prime yet, got very busy. Loved it so far. Very well done. Loved the Cuphead show, haven't watched all of it. Really loved what they did so far. Don't love as much of the games or the comics, but they still do a great job with it, and it's very special to see. And they did a wonderful job with it, and I really support everyone on the team. Wednesday, I'm very impressed by how they did so far. Del Toro's Pinocchio, I applaud. But of course, there is one studio that not only knocked it out of the park this year, but made it one of the best years that they have done and shown to us in years. And unquestionably, that studio is DreamWorks. I stand by the theory that many other people have that the past few years, especially the multiple sequels from DreamWorks' lesser franchises, especially the ones that we're not huge fans of compared to the others, like Boss Baby and the Croods, was their way of getting back on their feet to stay alive and not go bankrupt and either go bankrupt forever or possibly get engulfed by the teeming horrendous monster that is the gelatinous cube we call the Walt Disney Corporation. But in doing those movies and staying on top of things and staying on top of their finances, they gave a one-two punch this year that not only showed that DreamWorks has so much planned for the future that is extremely exciting, but not just for themselves, for animation as a whole. The bad guys, and one of my favorite animated movies of all time, and what I stand by is one of the greatest, greatest animated movies of all time, hands down, Puss in Boots, The Secret Wish. I've talked to death about how good Secret Wish was, repeatedly rewatched at this point, went and got to go back into theaters to see it again, it's still utterly phenomenal, and I finally got to check out The Bad Guys months after it came out earlier this year. And damn, these movies are good. I am so impressed by DreamWorks and how much they are truly pushing forward to get better to get better, get back into a proper rhythm, and to really show us why we love them so much. DreamWorks has once again entertaining, they're funny, they're engaging, they're beautiful to watch, they are reshaping animation in a way that other studios, especially Disney, do not want to yet. They are edgy, they are unafraid to take adult jokes in their kids' movies to a level that only DreamWorks is willing to go to and really dance around their PG rating. They make movie references to movies kids should never see at that age without fear of if people will get upset about it or not. Bad Guys opens, recreating part of the opening scene to Pulp Fiction. I am dead serious. That a kids movie by DreamWorks based off of a popular kids book series opens paying homage to Pulp Fiction. One of the most famous movies of all time by one of the most famous directors of all time, Quentin Tarantino. And then of course, like I've said, Puss in Boots, The Secret Wish. The best animated film of 2022. My personal favorite movie of 2022. And in every way, not only an improvement to the original movie, but an improvement over Avatar, water is cool, and humans are, are and humans are evil. So please hear me out in all of this as we go into 2023. Support Sony and support them well. Tell them what we want if they're going to continue on Spider-Man. We want to see more across the Spider-Verse. We don't want more Morbius style content that is tossed together to keep your possession of Spider-Man alive. 
we want Craven to be good. I want Craven to be good. But we want more like Across the Spider-Verse. We want to see Sony get their act together and respect animation. Because they're slowly, slowly getting better at that. Slowly. We want Netflix to quit making giant mistakes. We, want to keep, we need to keep fighting back and making it clear what we love about them. What we love that they are doing by supporting and watching the good stuff. The good shows and movies that they are creating. Supporting the right Netflix originals. So that they recognize that there is more to them than just being a Netflix original. We want to get it, we want to get the Mario movie over and done with, like ripping off a band-aid, and we'll see what happens, and then we'll move from there. I I am not about to speak for everyone on this. I want Disney to get the stick out of their ass that they have regarding their animation right now. I want them to pump the brakes hard on the MCU and let it slow down and breathe again as we enter phase five. And let their VFX artists time to breathe and really give their projects new life again and calm down on the intense oversaturation that has spoiled so much of phase four for everyone, myself included. And I want John Wick Chapter 4, Evil Dead Rise, Scream 6, and Illumination's Mario movie to kick live-action Little Mermaid's ass. Please? Thank you. And of course, I want to see... I gotta do this right. Give me just a second. I can put it... Did I just put that? There it is. I want DreamWorks Animation. Currently now, one of my favorite studios in the world of entertainment and movies of all time to keep going. Keep experimenting, keep expanding and give us more incredible movies like what you gave us this year so that we can stand up to our own demons. So that we can stand up to the people who look down on us as animation fans and mock us. To those who think that animation is just kids' stuff, and especially those who think it should only be made as kids' stuff. So that we can look down at them. Like an animated orange tabby cat with a rapier. Stared down a giant wolf with two sickles that existed as death himself. And we can stare directly at them and say proudly and defiantly, Fear me if you dare. Let's make 2023 a year where animation thrived, where it stood up for everything good in entertainment. And we proved, as animation fans, as video game fans, as motion capture fans, as 2D fans, as hand-drawn fans, as CGI fans, that we are not a minority. We are not a genre. We are not a fad, and we are not kid stuff. That we, as a community, not only respect animation, but rule. Animation is one of the most important art 
methods of art we have in modern culture today. And I'm not letting a mouse stop me from proclaiming the good in diversity and variety in your styles. And I'm sure as hell not letting anyone tell me that I can't like a kid's movie because I'm not a kid. Will you? Thank you. After dropping and breaking my phone earlier late last week, I have finally got it back so I'm now able to do videos again. I have quite a bit planned for the future. I am working on finally getting done with and releasing my second video in the Epic Mickey saga, covering Epic Mickey 3, the cancelled Epic Donald, and the rejected Epic Mickey movie, again tying in the animation. I am working on a video concept for talking about coin pushers and bulldozer games that you often see in arcades and used to at carnivals tricky methods that you need to become a lot better at multiple versions of said games, and the unique skill, luck, and heavy amount of physics that actually go into those games that you wouldn't realize just looking at them at face value. I have three tasting sessions lined up for you all. I am covering the Mountain Dew King Super's exclusive Thrashed Apple, the official release, re-release, of the long-forgotten Mountain Dew flavor Pitch Black, which is officially returned this year. And the new PepsiCo flavor, after the retired Sierra Mist, Starry. See what is different about it. And sometime between all of that, the four of us and Reaper have our lives and stories to tell. I'm looking to get back into projects again instead of vignettes and videos as best as I can because I want to give the best content I can. But one that I have for the future that much like this video today will be a bit of a soapbox. More importantly, really emphasizes the importance of media that is tossed aside and seemed as kid stuff. Sometime soon, I don't know when yet, I will be dissecting and explaining why this one comic book of Spider-Man and Howard the Duck teaming up dives into the ideas of status quos, fads and entertainment, mob mentalities, equal rights of American citizens, and the freedom of creativity, new ideas, and generational gaps. And how just this one little comic does more than anything I have seen Disney or really any major studio, especially live action in a long time, do when it comes to teaching you something that is not only a timeless lesson, but is a lesson you need to hear. Remember that you will influence more people by being loud and wrong than by being soft and right. But that doesn't make it okay for you to influence those people. That means you're influencing them. And if you're getting influencing people by being loud and wrong, maybe you need to step back and really think about why are you influencing them to do that? And is it because of something that they're doing wrong? Or maybe. Just maybe. It's something you're doing wrong. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon.